Welcome. 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 Robin Gibson from Chester. Um, my question concerns the duration of hell. Um, an apparent contradiction between the Hadith and the Quran. If I might read the Hadith, it says, There will come on hell a day when its shutters will strike against each other and there will be none left in it. That will happen after the inmates of hell will have lived in it for centuries. Musnad. But um, in the Quran, the word Abadar is used in three places with regard to hell. I don't know Arabic, but I, I understand that that means forever. Could you? Uh, yes, inshallah. Thank you so much. Could you please sit you. while I answer you? <coughs> the question of hell and heaven has first to be understood in, uh, as far as the nature of hell and the nature of heaven are concerned. If it is just a pit of fire like the one presented in our fiction, like Milton's Hell and Milton's Paradise, or Inferno by some other scholars, it's an Italian, it was an Italian author who wrote Inferno, didn't he? What was the name? One? Dante. Uh, Dante is Inferno. This is not the religious concept, in fact. The religious concept is very different from the commonly held view about the hell and also about the heaven. So whether they're everlasting or not, how far can they be everlasting? What is the justification of giving a punishment to a limited, against a limited sin? limited in time, limited in its uh, volume and application, which punishment is overwhelmingly large, out of all proportion, and everlasting is inconceivable. But what is the mechanism, what is the philosophy of all this? Without understanding these questions, my answer will not be understandable. But I have to be very brief, it's a very big issue I have taken up. According to Islam, according to the study of the Holy Quran, the hell and the heaven are made here on earth by human actions. And every man's hell is different than any other person's hell. We create our own hell. And we create our own heaven. How do we do it? This issue has been discussed in detail in the Holy Quran repeatedly from different angles. I have, at this is not the appropriate time to go into the, a detailed discussion, but I can give you the gist of my study. According to the Quran, when we act against our conscience, the first time we do it, we register a hesitation. We hear a voice from within. This is wrong, you shouldn't do it. But when you do it repeatedly, then the voice of protest from within is still ultimately. And then you have a free hand to do whatever you like, but you know it is wrong, even if you do not read much of religion or religious doctrines. It has related to the human psyche as it is created by God. So everything which is wrong in relation to human beings or your behavior towards human beings is known to all human beings alike universally. It's not an issue of a religious training or lack of that. So what you owe to others, even to the animals, you know it because that is built in in you. So. Once you begin to discard the process of your conscience repeatedly, then your personality undergoes a, a, a rapid change or a gradual change in accordance with your, your uh, relation with crime. Or se uh, Sin and crime are the two words let's forget for a while in relation to the violation of the dictates of your own conscience. When you do that, your personality undergoes a change. 
and it becomes visible what you are becoming. You, you become hard-hearted, you become insensible to the sufferings of others. You lack the capability of sharing your pleasure with the destitute and their misery with yourself. This is moving away from God. This is moving away from the attributes of God which have designed us. This is the meaning that man is made in the figure of God. He has created man under the light of his own attributes. The stamp of the creator is on human nature. So the moment you decide to work against the dictates of your own nature and take a separate path going away from what you were created by God, then you end up into an area which is non-existent as far as God is concerned, which is not created by God. That is what is evil and the evil surrounding and the evening, evil world you let yourself be uh, engulfed in. Now, when such a man dies, he has lost all taste for goodness. He has lost all taste for the attributes of God. When he re-emerges into the new world, next world, and his sensibilities are sharpened in the right direction, the closer he is to the attributes of God, the more will he be a suffering man. You can visualize this with the help of daily human experience. If somebody is addicted to pop music and that pop music is with the help from him, even for a day or two, he will feel you know, uneasy and vacant, missing something, craving for something which he can't have. It's not a physical craving at all. It is not a physical craving. Because he's fed well, he's given water or whatever drinks he likes in plenty, and yet he misses something. What is that something? Something which he has spiritually created for himself. Now, if in after death there is no such player which man pursues here on earth and trains himself to be satisfied with that, then the lack of it is hell. You see, those who are drug addicts, sometimes if you, the withdrawal uh, is too quick, too sharp, sharp they will commit suicide. So that is the spiritual hell which is created here on earth by man. And the spiritual heaven is also created here and we see the signs of hell and heaven here on earth. It's impossible for a man to continue to create hell for him here and expect a heaven in the hereafter, or the vice versa. When you do good, anyone, I mean, if he does good, it is not a question of a future promise of reward. He's rewarded there and then. The act of goodness is a reward in itself. It brings about definite changes in his personality, the goodness to which he ultimately gets addicted becomes reflected in his expression, in his face, in his style of talking, in everything he does. And every time he is used to do some goodness in certain area of goodness, after a while he will have to do some more because this again is the human nature that you can be satisfied with something for a while but after a while the same thing becomes boring for you. If you do not add to it, then the pleasure is lost. If you do not subtract from it, subtract from it then the shock of sorrow is, is absent. So what is life? It is sorrow and happiness changing sides, up and downs of these passions in man. So exactly like this, goodness 
goes on building itself in man. And when it becomes eternal in him, when it becomes an integral part of him, then the reward has to be eternal. Because death is not his own design. He does not cease to do goodness because he's tired of it. He's rather addicted of goodness. So according to the Holy Quran, that is the true definition of goodness which comes and stays with you, never leaves you after the, afterwards. If you are addicted to the hell exactly in the same sense, then it should also be eternal. But the Holy Quran says, with the grace of Allah, because his mercy overwhelms everything else, even his mercy is, is transcendent over his own other uh, attributes. So out of sheer grace and mercy, he'll bring the hell to a, an end at last. But that was not because it should happen like this automatically. It shouldn't happen, but with the grace of Allah in the hereafter, after a while when the man has punished in the sense that he learns to live without evil, without evil cravings, I should say, then gradually, a time would come when he would be removed from that hell of his own creation and will be gradually moved towards heaven. Now the time scale which, which we read a study in the Holy Quran or other scriptures seems to be very large. But to my understanding, the time scale of heaven and the time scale of the hell should not be judged in the same terms, with the same yardsticks. Because when we suffer, our time expands. And sometimes a moment appears like eternity. When we are happy, the time flies by. Even the years spent in happiness fly like uh, duties and, you know, just in the twinkle of the eye, we seem to have finished our period of happiness. So when the hell is described as long, it may not be in real terms of the number of years, etc., or number of units of time. When the heaven is described as interminable, there is no other way it should have been described. Because even if it terminated after a billion years, the pleasure and the happiness and the satisfaction of the heaven would seem to have passed by in a matter of a few moments. So this is what I have learned from the Quran. I don't have time to give references in detail, but when I said something, I always had a, a verse, particular verse in my mind. So hell will not be eternal. Heaven will have to be eternal because the reward for his goodness came to an it could not come to an end because his goodness could not come to an end. So in all fair play and justice, the reward of such a goodness which had to continue if he, death had not put an end to it, has to be eternal. Thank you.